Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello and welcome to our Coffee Break. Connie's not with us today. She has an opportunity to luxuriate in Chatham, so we said, you know, not, don't have to be here. Happy that you're there. But we are excited to have Connor Deegan, town clerk, on our couch today and having joining us for coffee, particularly since it is the Friday before town meeting. And what Darlene always calls the Carnival of Democracy. <laughs> your favorite, uh, all, your, one of your favorite events in, in town of the year. I mean, yeah, I go. I never miss town meeting. I can't say that I'm a diehard where I stay to the end. You know, I've, I've sat down through weed propaganda. I mean, I would say some of the diehards are people like, you know, Ken Weissmantle, B. McMullen, who sometimes I drive, <laughs> I give her rides, and B. will always be like, Darlene, you know if I go with you, I ha I'm staying to the end and have to, you know, I'm like, okay, I'll always make sure you have a ride home. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're thrilled to have Connor here, and we look forward to chatting about all that, that's happening with regard to town meeting. But I just want to make, you know, you've been a uh, town clerk now for two years. Yep, just about. And I think that you are the youngest millennial ever elected to a position in town governance here in Hopkinton. So kudos <laughs> to you and to the young taking over. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, over these two years, you have actually gotten a pretty wide gambit of things happening. You've had local elections. You've had a presidential election. Yeah. You've had a recount. First you've, week I had a recount. The yeah, first week you had a recount. <laughs> job. Um, you've had, you know, a move from one building to another. And you actually have a, a, a very integral part of a move because so much of what you protect is actually very personal data. It's locked up. And all the election machines have to be locked up. So you had a bigger part in this whole move. It definitely made getting ready for town meeting and election last year very difficult because it was about the same time last year that we were moving around. But uh, this year, fortunately, we've, at least in our temporary offices, we have that kind of infrastructure set up so that we can be prepared to get everything ready. Um, I have access to. The, the vaults now, it's dry. It's not still dripping like it was last year. Uh, so I can get to the machines that are still being stored in there. I still keep a lot of the, the records, the, uh, the ballots, the absentee envelopes, and the, uh, the actual tabulators in the vault until Election Day. In the original town in hall? In the actual original So there's town always hall. been some stuff still in there? Yes. Oh, wow. Have you gotten to pick like your paint color for your new office or anything? No, I, I was not involved in that decision. I, I, I walked in one day to go do a record search and found that uh, there was first coat of paint on to show what the color scheme was going to look like. Ooh, and any spoiler alerts? What, what shade of? There's a, there's a few blues and like kind of slate grays and oh, beiges. Nice. It's, a, it's very, a very like, calming. Yeah, it's a very nice <laughs> calming color scheme. Because a lot of times when you're in there, it isn't that calm. <laughs> But you guys have been running like a well-oiled machine up on 80 South. Yeah. 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 Well, and it's just the, the case that, you know, the town has a lot of good people who work for it. Mm -hmm. And they work really hard to make sure that, you know, these kinds of disruptions aren't going to be a lapse in service to the residents who rely on us. So, Connor, just thinking over the last two years as town clerk, and you jumped into this with, with you know, both feet and, and, you know, your knowledge and dedication was evident from day one. But any surprises, you know, when you stepped into this job and just thinking about over the two years, was there anything that sort of surprised you about the job, you know, positively or not or whatever, or just any ahas? Uh -huh. I, I, I think I'm always surprised every year by what ends up being a controversial article at town meeting. But other than that, I think I kind of had a, a bit of a grasp after my work in the clerk's office prior about yeah. what was what well, was coming up. And <laughs> well, I think what was really new coming up is getting – getting elected, then immediately like, oh my god, I have to do a recount. Right, which is <laughs> such a procedural and thing. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, when you think about the recount, it's who now is the current chair of the Board of Health. Yeah. And everyone on the Board of Health is actually fairly new. Yeah. And um, including the director they hired this past year. And I can't believe how much that one department has done in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. From um, We had one of the uh, Board of Health members on the show a week or so ago, right. talking Michael about King. like um, the the ticks and stuff going on. Then I saw Carolyn Dykema post about ticks today. It's going to be on ABC News um, tonight. But um, you know, from the plastic bag ban to you know the nicotine raise and age, that this has been a very productive and 
between all new people, transition, the facility moving. <laughs> and yeah. your knowledge of town governance, the operational aspects of it, you know, procedures, process, structure, is an amazing, you know, gift to the town in terms of that capability, and you're the go-to on answering those questions and guiding everybody. Well, I, I like to say they got fortunate in that I, my major interests were civics and politics, and yeah. that's pretty much what this job ends up being. We, you know, we used to call you <laughs> Alex P. Keaton, if anybody remembers. <laughs> <laughs> From Family Ties. From Family Ties back in the day, this guy, this kid who was, it was, what's the actor? Who's the actor that plays? Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox, who played this, you know, the geek about governance, and not that you're a geek, but you know, you certainly were all about it, <laughs> you know, which is unusual for you know a young person or anybody, frankly. It's why I got to brag about being one of four to pass the citizenship test at Hopkinton 101. Yeah, ah. and you were the first one to yes. pass it. And I and didn't even pass it 100 percent. <laughs> um, I had a few wrong. Claire Wright and I both failed. Uh, no, is it a fail? Or you, you I have to get up every single yeah, question Yeah, you right. fail if you don't get 100% on it. My, um, I better not leave the country and <laughs> try to come back then. Margie and I got the same question wrong because mm -hmm. I thought um, public school was a right to all. It's not? No. Nope. Wow, who knew? Yeah. I mean, it was like, I thought I, I thought I had it. And so, because a lot of it was dates, and I'm like, for some yeah, dates, reason, I missed some a reason dates. the dates were just clicking for me. Yeah. And then I'm like, I failed because I didn't know that pu public school wasn't open to all. We should put that on, you know, social media, that test, because I think it's a fun, you know, exercise. Oh, I thought it was a blast, take, actually. Yeah, to see how little we know as American citizens. Yeah, you know, I thought it was, um, you, know, you know, Connor definitely knows who I am. You've known him for years. Yeah. And that, you know, when you say, like, he is so detailed-oriented, you won't believe how detailed. I was it a few months ago where I had to come in and get something notarized. You know, <laughs> I was like, Darling, can you pull out your driver's license? I was like, serious? I was like, yeah, here it is. It's like, yeah, I know you, but but, <laughs> but I still have to actually physically check the ID and write down in my log what your ID number is and all that. Well, you carry your notary thing in your pocket, don't you? In case you o only, call when the duty it, only when I plan on doing notaries over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been able to, you've added a couple other signature lines to then just town clerk. You mentioned notary. Yeah. Um, you've gotten to do some... Well, no, fun things. Uh, easily one of the most fun things I get to do is be a justice of the peace. Oh. It's, I got it right in June after getting elected, and I've performed dozens of marriages now, and they're just always so much fun. And getting to be in that kind of intimate moment in people's lives yeah. is just really touching. Wow, I didn't know that. That's wonderful. And I'm, I have a policy that since I'm already getting paid with taxpayer money, I make it so that residents don't pay anything for my services. Well, what? And non-residents will pay the usual like amount. statute fee set, but mm -hmm. I don't charge anything to residents who come for it. Well, now you heard it here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So what's on your mind on this Friday before the big... The big day on Monday night. So it's been a, an exciting week, as I'm sure everyone has has noticed. And you know, we've been running around making sure everything's all set up, that uh, we have everything printed and ready for when people come in to get their handouts, and yes. presentations are all set up so people can see everything. And uh, and then I'm sure a few people have heard about that the moderator is pushing for electronic voting this year uh, as just a pilot. It's not going to be for the full meeting. And how's that work? So do we get a clicker? So no, kind of like we, in a game show. We did. We <laughs> actually did look into uh, into clickers, uh, but they were very cost prohibitive to end up using them. Uh, it was kind of going to be upwards of ten thousand dollars to fifteen thousand dollars per meeting to mm. per night even. Yeah, yeah oh, some God. of them were per night. Jeez. Uh, and we'd have to have extra staff on hand to make sure that everyone surrendered their clicker as they left the room. Mm -hmm. So it, it ended up being uh, cost prohibitive to look at those. But we then stumbled across one organization. Uh, they're called Votes. They're Boston-based. Mm -hmm. And they do it actually through a smartphone app that if you don't have access to a smartphone, then you just use your... Uh, you can use a tablet that they'll provide at the meeting. So cool. am I able to, you download the app? Yep. So, okay, I'm going into Google. Okay. All right. How do I this spell it? Live. How do v -O -A -T -Z, I spell it? V-O-A-T-Z. 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 
And you can actually even just, there's actually um, guides and user manuals if you actually go to hopkintonma.votes.com. So it says voting redefined. Do I have to, it says pre- So this is, this is for their, so this is for their actual like sales site. Oh, so okay. if you go, go to uh, the URL and just put in, um, as you can even just add right in the front of the URL, it's already there. If you just add the hopkintonma.votes.com, then that will actually take you to a page that has FAQs. It has user manuals for how to get it all set up on both. Let me see. Oh, on, so I'm going to the Hopkinton website. No, so it's actually not the Hopkinton website. The uh, votes team actually set this one up for us. And of course, we're going to have all this on the you know, on the yeah, show. Yeah, I want to see how it works. Info. Yeah. I know it's a cool idea. But while you're look while you're doing that, let me ask. So it is an opportunity. So that normally at town meeting, we're standing up or raising our hand, right, to yep. when they count votes and people run up and down the aisle. And this will be different. That we'll have if those who have smartphones will be able to vote somehow. So they'll be able to vote something. using their own using the app on their phone mm -hmm. and their own device, while okay, so people. Okay, so says smartphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the finish smartphone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> people who who don't have those apps yeah. or don't have the technology or or may, might just feel intimidated by it. Right. Will have access to tablets that'll be communal and they can have a volunteer help them okay. figure it out or a staff member from Votes if they're unsure yeah. if their vote went through. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have kind of those backup measures all set up so that no one feels disenfranchised on it. Absolutely. So it comes up with a banner that says, Town of Hopkins, smartphone apps for voting in spring 2018 town meeting. Get it on Google. And Install. Yep. It's looking pretty mm -hmm. easy. It's looking pretty easy. And it's installed. It still says installing. Oh, there you go. So now Takes a open. And that's it. And so now you just you can hit sign up. And so all it asks for is your phone number and your email. So mm -hmm. one of the things that this is a bonus for, and people, I, I knew, noticed the other day doing some, uh, some discussions for people that they weren't sure, they thought this was going to be recording their votes. Uh, uh. And it actually doesn't. Uh, you appear as an anonymous user to, okay. uh, to anyone looking at the data. I see. So we have no idea how you're casting your vote, mm -hmm. uh, and we just ensure using a QR code that you're given instead of the little colored slip of paper right, at right, right, check-in right. that you are a voter. Gotcha. And during the votes that you don't have the, uh, the we don't, aren't using the app for it, then you just use that as your voter card anyway. Mm -hmm. So you would recommend that people download this before they come to town. Right. Definitely. And you yeah. get a verification code. You type it in, and you're in. Exactly. Yeah. So when you when so you I go to that register, took, it took less. Yeah. It takes less than a minute. Right. Yeah. You're in. So you download beforehand, and when you go to register, when you come to town meeting, they'll give you a code, or you'll give them a code or something. So what actually what it does for the verification code is it sends you a text to the phone number that you put on. Right. Uh -huh. And, and then way, I got a code, and then you enter yep. it in. That way, it verifies that the device is actually the one registering. So it's gotcha. and so it's a way to make sure it's just a it's a safety measure that most secure apps use nowadays to make right. sure that you're actually the one signing in with that device. So, but you still have to register, right? When you get to the middle school, yep. you still so need to go to... You'll still go and sign in. Okay. So if yeah. you have the app all set up ahead of time, mm -hmm. then you get to skip the step of dealing with that later. Okay. So what you do is, step by step, is you go into the cafeteria just like usual, mm -hmm. sign in to vote. Then once you've gotten checked in, they'll hand you a card that has the little QR code on it. It's about the size of a business card. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes time to cast a vote, mm -hmm. uh, or even before that, once you actually get that QR code, you can use your phone. There's a little button when you're looking at your kind of dashboard. And you just scan the QR code, and it says, welcome yeah, voter for in. town meeting okay. for Hopkinton. Are we doing this for every question? or No. Um, we're just doing this as a pilot right now. We just want to see if people are comfortable using it. Mm -hmm. And if it actually might be feasible in the future, mm -hmm. we're not going to assume that this is definite and this isn't, we're not signed in in a contract mm -hmm. to be gotcha. obligated to continue using it. Right. Okay. Um, what we are being told is, you know, the fee we're paying for the pilot will be credited towards the fee if we keep going forward. So will we that. vote on any actual articles with it? Yes. So uh, I know that the moderator has expressed he doesn't want to. The budget or something? He doesn't want to put <laughs> anything up that's controversial. Um, I recommended not just unanimous articles, but 
articles that might get a little bit of a split would be good to show that yeah, show the people working. can see that if they vote no, it's still showing up there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so we'll, on the screen, will it show like a bar of like where the votes came in? So after everything's done, so during the vote itself, uh, the moderator will, after people have begun voting, they will, he'll ask and say, has everyone voted? If anyone says they haven't or expresses in some way that they're still trying to get the tablet or anything, then they'll be like, okay, we'll vote for another moment. I'll check again. Once it's been confirmed that everyone has voted, then he'll go ahead and say close voting. It'll get locked after that. And then it'll appear up on the screen from IT in the back. Mm -hmm. So I know as a parent when we're at the schools, you're kind of like have not been able to get on Wi-Fi and things like that. So it has like the, the protective umbrella been lifted for town meeting night? So what we ended so we had our, our walk through with the uh, with the IT staff from both the school and the town okay. to get everything all set because we, we do it every year anyway. But this one just was the first walkthrough that we really had a lot to talk about when we were doing it. <laughs> yeah. So we got in and we were discussing, you know, approximately how many people would be connecting to Wi Fi, how many devices we thought might be in there trying. So uh, a show could talk to us about making sure he would make sure that the uh, there would be signal boosters, that there would be enough Wi-Fi that there should not be an issue as long as uh, we are limiting what other people are using it for. Uh, so we're going to lift off the uh, the password off of the Wi-Fi for just the town meeting and uh, potentially put some proxies in to stop people from using a ton of other apps on it. I mean, I know when our kids are in school and stuff, if they want to text us or call, I know at least at the high school, um, they literally have to step into the lobby or right outside the building to be able to get a hold that of That high part. school is built like a bunker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. will, and, and honestly, even the auditorium, you're not going to get a cell signal in there to save your life. Mm -hmm. But uh, this will be running off of the Wi-Fi. We'll have a backup that if the Wi-Fi starts to fail us for any reason, the votes team is bringing in hotspots that they'll be able to set up to handle the traffic. So, uh, Cool. I know that that means we're going to be have to be hooked up for, to Wi-Fi from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. But you're going to drain batteries. Not everyone has you know battery packs with them and portables. What happens if like you run out of juice and it's voting time? So I asked that same question of the team actually when we were doing a demo, and they said it's actually really easy because if that happens for any reason, if your phone dies and you just you don't have a charger, there's nowhere to charge in that auditorium really. Mm -hmm. Right. So. You just can use one of the voting tablets for that. They essentially act as a kiosk, mm -hmm. but a kiosk that can be handed around if need be. Okay. So if you say, oh, my phone died, then you just ask to use the tablet for the next vote. Mm -hmm. And then you just scan in your QR code. for. And the difference with the tablet is you scan in the QR code for any vote. Uh, so are they bringing the staff in with the, these tablets? Yep. Yeah. No, this is good. And to give everyone a heads up, if they want to be part of this and try this, to you know, be sure your phone is fully charged. Bring a battery pack if you have it. If you don't, there'll be tablets. Yep, we and have it'll backups be a cool in thing, place. Technology to try. Absolutely. Go, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was this? This was actually Tom's idea. Oh, uh, our moderator. Our moderator, and mm -hmm. you know, he brought up uh, a few months back that he wanted to try electronic voting. I'm sure some people probably saw when he brought it up at the board of selectmen meeting. Mm. Uh, and when he did. Uh, both Norman and I were excited, like, wow, we never expected that the moderator would be the one to start this process. I love it. And so uh, we we worked with him as best we could to make sure that, you know, he had done a lot of research already, but mm -hmm. um, I, I knew already some clerks who had started using the technology, so I was looking into it that way as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I saw Norm yesterday at the first responders appreciation breakfast, and he was extremely excited about this. He talked about how it was at the state Republican convention, that it's going to be at the upcoming Democratic state convention, yep. and that he goes, we're just doing what everybody else is doing, too. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I know there's, uh, there's at least one other town that's going to be implementing it for open town meeting. Um, that is, uh, it's Northboro. Okay. So similar demographic, mm -hmm. uh, and they're going to be rolling it out for their, uh, their fall town meeting. Awesome. So you, wow. you roll off of town meeting, which could go several days, wrap up that, and then you immediate roll into what? two weeks later town election. Yep. 
Dun, 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 dun. Everyone Sorry. else is all is all excited when town meeting's over in town hall because they're like, oh, great, all the work's over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then you get out the legions of senior citizens who ban man the voting booths. And, and we've had uh, we've had a few people who started that are uh, in the younger age demographic too. Oh, okay. And as volunteers as part of the yeah, support. Yeah, it's been great to have new people come on, especially as some retire, and mm -hmm. it's always great to have some new fresh faces in there. To I love really how you said like new, new younger people as they retire. Well, no, <laughs> as, as, other, as the retirees roll yeah. off, you're saying yeah. younger people are back. Because we've, we've had a few that have uh, have retired or just expressed that. You know, either maybe they're moving and this they're not gonna be able to do it anymore. Right. I know my friend Dick has done it a couple of times and yep. he had just recently retired. Yeah. And uh, and actually Dick's helping me again uh, this year where he's gonna be helping me as a machine inspector again. Ah. So. ah. so anything else on your mind? I mean this is a lot of heavy how duty many, stuff. How many articles this year yeah. for town meeting? We have uh, actually it was smaller than usual. I think it was forty eight off the top of my head. Yeah. So roughly how many nights do you think this will go? I, I think that Tom has done a dynamite job mm -hmm. of keeping us on track and making us wrap up in two nights. Okay. I think that this will go two nights. I think that'll be it. Okay. Um, and, and I was the, you know, the one who was all worried last year because I'm so used to in my head, town meeting goes at least three nights, yeah. that I was like booking the auditorium for three to four nights at any given meeting. And this one, I was like, I'll just do the three nights. We'll have the one back up, but hopefully we won't need, any, need anything else. So since this goes until 11 p.m., at least, you know, first night, anybody selling any beverages or snacks or anything to make the food comfortable? Food trucks outside. Food trucks, I mean, come so on. Agio's pizza with the fire yeah, out, get snappy on. dogs. So there, was, yeah. there was a proposal to do that this year. Uh, E-Hop had brought it up, and it was, it was a great idea. We a lot of us were all on board for it yes. and um, the when we actually tried to finalize it and get the yes or no because snappy dogs had already said yeah we'll be there yeah, yeah. Uh, that's where we heard from the school department that they were a little concerned with having something that was selling for profit on school grounds as well as the um, potential violations of the food prohibition in the auditorium so bring your own food B Y O. But, on, but only well, eat it. Prohibition in there. But but so, so you can only eat it in the hallway. <laughs> so you know, I mean, it's a big ask. I say this, I'm the big complainer. It's a big well, ask for people to be out sitting in an auditorium, unair conditioned, for till mid till during the time that some people have dinner. Ex I mean, during I actually, time, exactly. I think it'd be great to be able to that. That's another thing where it. it if we my, move to a, one Saturday and knock this out from an 8 a.m. to a four or five even then you got to offer people some refreshments just a human need well and if you do stuff like that it it, it works well to keep people around because yes. they get like you know five minute breaks where they can intermission go, and, go yeah, get a snack exactly, exactly. you know it's just this Car i called the, the carnival, carnival to this democracy we could have carnival rides we could uh, you know <laughs> what if the selectman came down on a water slide i would just <laughs> Just like to be able to get a bottle of water. Really the town yeah. circus. We would make it there. I just want a bottle of water or a soda. We and, have a, know, actually a, a great director and producer. I wanted to actually, um, hey, Mike, can you come out? <laughs> Where is he? He's hiding. Oh, here he is. Hey, well, Mike. I've got work to do out here. <laughs> <laughs> i got to be quick. So, yeah. yeah, he's got work to do. But yeah. so, well, Mike is awesome. He, he, is he does our show. He wears red every Friday. And why? It's uh, Red stands for Remember Everyone Deployed. Okay. Remember, everyone deployed. Uh, the, today's also a different special day, and this is National Firefighters Day. So it's a okay. chance to actually thank Mike for what he does on the floor. International. International Firefighters Day. Yeah, and if you don't know, Mike, you are, you are with the Ashland Fire Department. I'm full-time with Ashland. I'm a call firefighter. Awesome. Yeah, we just so appreciate you. You're such a ball. You're officially director. That's what I always think of you. Yeah, director, producer. I'm pushing all the buttons back there. And, and, and you know, do a little of everything. Yeah. Do a everything. <laughs> and you, uh, if you want, if, uh, if people don't know, we tape this in the morning. It airs at night, and it gets replayed during the week. Mike got off of work at eight o'clock this morning. He came <laughs> in and did this. an all nighter. Yeah, yeah. It's just a small twenty-four hour shift. <laughs> 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 Honest, and you know, we could we could do this without him, obviously. But you know, he's just guided us and so helpful throughout the whole thing. So is this the first time we've had you on our show. No, no, no. Okay, okay, I didn't think so. When, um, this before is, he was before elected, you were elected. I is, yeah, I came on before I was elected. 
I want to almost say it was one other time, but. Right. I was saying earlier you were the youngest millennial. You're the only millennial elected in this town. Uh, for, yeah, for a public office, I believe so. Elected I, for public? You mean yep. plenty of people on staff mm -hmm. and whatnot in, town, in the town hall? Well, and yeah. actually, are, what we were saying before it, in that, uh, you know, there are other people, I mean, the millennial age range is, di is different than just in the 20s at this point. The right. Early 30s as well. Right. I mean, there's a, a couple others that I know of that, like, for example, uh, in the same age range, Mike King would count as a millennial. Yeah. Right. Jessica, oh, yeah. um, okay. My, uh, Mike King, Jess, Jessica King is, is elected millennial. Yeah, she, mm -hmm. um, Janine LeBlanc, who's running for office, will yep. be, is a millennial. Um, appointed as a millennial is uh, Jessica Fleet, who's on, um, mm -hmm. I forget what committee is set. Uh, she, she's on the, um, uh, the zoning the Zoning Board of Appeals. And I think on your board, just bridging off a millennial is um, Gary Russell. Gary, Gary Russell. Yep. But Would we, you see the train you started? <laughs> <laughs> they all followed you. Yeah. I won't exactly. take any credit for that. <laughs> but, uh, Darling, so any, what, time any does Tom, yeah. what time does town meeting start on Monday? 7 o'clock, but Seven you can get there early. I, I always get there early. So. Bring your well, jammies. Yeah. Bring, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, things going on. Well, today's May the fourth. I can right. also. So it's supposed to be the fourth. Be with you. I'm actually probably one of the few people in the world who can say I don't think I've ever watched Star Wars from, from all the way through. I'm sure we can fix that someday. <laughs> fix that someday. Well, may the fourth be with, with you, you. everyone. Happy Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> yes, indeed. Derby Day tomorrow. Absolutely. Connor, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so for much being for having me. See you all. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Did you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Guidi, family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits, and I'm here to tell you how it can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance. In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills, resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. To find out more, go to massmed.org.